Hello guys, this is Joe Neville and welcome to this video on BGP Root Reflectors. I feel like I should have one of those TV style introductions previously on BGP In Depth because this video follows on closely from my previous two videos dealing with the theme of loop prevention in BGP. In video 4 I discussed eBGP using ASPath to stop prefixes looping in a network. Then in video 5 I looked at iBGP and explained why full mesh doesn't scale and how BGP root reflectors can help here. If you haven't watched those videos I recommend that you do so, links in the description, because rather than just talking about root reflectors it will help you more I feel if you understand why are they used in the wider context of loop prevention. So a quick recap about IBGP rules. No IBGP learnt prefix is advertised to an IBGP peer. This leads to the requirement of having a full mesh of IBGP peers and what do we all know about full mesh networks? They do not scale. Now root reflectors can help here. A root reflector is just a BGP speaker in an IBGP network. It has IBGP sessions to clients and non-clients. So this is a new designation within the BGP network. These are configurable status, but they are local only to the root reflector. So the clients and the non-clients, they do not have any configuration on them that designates that they are connected to a root reflector. It is just from the point of view of the root reflector. With that in mind, a non client is just a normal IBGP configuration between the client and the root reflector but a client is an IBGP session configured as normal but with this additional command peer and then the IP address of the peer reflect client and the root reflector breaks those IBGP rules for propagation of prefixes we will advertise from our root reflector eBGP learnt prefixes, so that's standard. iBGP learnt prefixes from clients and non-clients. So this is the special rule here for root reflectors. It will reflect iBGP learnt prefixes. But I should just reiterate that no non-client to non-client iBGP prefixes are reflected. That's important to remember. What does this mean then? Have a look at this network here. It's an IBGP network with six nodes. Without root reflectors, that would mean 15 BGP sessions would need to be configured for the full mesh. Now with the root reflector, because the root reflector will reflect the prefixes between its clients and non-clients, the nodes only have to peer with the root reflector. So with six nodes, as you can see here, we only need five BGP sessions. So a dramatic reduction in the amount of configuration, or the administrative overhead, and the number of sessions that we need in this network. Obviously, the relative savings in overhead are increased the more nodes that you have in your network. But one issue with this type of network, having a single root reflector is not really recommended because that's a single point of failure. So we normally have redundancy and we can have two root reflectors and our clients will be configured to peer with both of those. In this six node network with two root reflectors, we're still down from our 15 BGP sessions that we would need to full mesh and we're down to nine BGP sessions. So you can see the saving there. And why root reflectors have been getting quite a bit of press recently is you've probably heard about leaf spine networks. They're all the rage in data center networking at the moment. And root reflectors enable manageable IBGP design. So you do not have to have your leaves peering with each other. The leaves can peer with the spine switches. If the spine switches are root reflectors, then the leaves will learn about all of the neighboring leaf prefixes. Let's get into the demo then. Here's the network that I will be showing you root reflector configuration using VSRs on my laptop as usual. I've got four VSRs in a single AS and I've got this other one here, VSR201 in a different AS. So we've got eBGP between VSR201 and 103. I'm going to configure this VSR103 as the root reflector. So that's going to be the heart of our network. 
then I'm going to have two clients, VSR 101 is going to be a client, VSR 102 is going to be a client, they are going to form a cluster it's called, and then we're going to have VSR 104 as a non-client. Each one of the devices in the network except for VSR 102 are injecting a local prefix into the network and we're going to check what configuring a root reflector in the network does to the BGP routing tables. Here I have three SSH sessions, two devices in my network. Top left I've got VSR 103 that's going to be our root reflector. Then bottom left I've got VSR 102 which is going to be a client in my cluster. And top right we've got VSR 104 which is going to be a non-client. So let's start by looking at VSR 103's BGP configuration. As you can see there we've got a router ID and we've got four sessions for BGP and then those are turned on, they're enabled within the address family for IPv4 unicast and we're injecting via a network statement this local network 172.30.99 slash 24. So nothing in there at the moment which designates that this is a root reflector. Down here on VSR 102, let's have a look at the BGP configuration. Not much to see. We're not injecting any prefixes. There's nothing on there that suggests that uh, we're going to be part of a cluster or anything like that. Uh, we've just got an iBGP session up to VSR 103. So let's have a look at VSR 102's BGP routing table. So nothing configured for root reflectors or cluster at the moment. What we have here is two internally learned BGP prefixes. We can see that we've got this 192.168.99 as we would expect. So that's coming across from VSR201 across the eBGP and then VSR103 is advertising that on. Now that is in a line with standard BGP because it's an eBGP learnt prefix that is then going to be propagated via iBGP so nothing new there we also have this 172.30.99.24 now that's injected by VSR103 so that also adheres to standard iBGP advertisement rules as we would expect what we're not seeing on VSR102 is this network that's being injected by VSR101, this 172.30.1 slash 24, or the network that's being injected by VSR104, this 172.30.4 slash 24 network. Now if we configure the VSR103 as a root reflector, we should see these two prefixes in VSR102 because the root reflector will break the standard IBGP rules about propagating IBGP prefixes and it will reflect IBGP learnt prefixes from clients and non-clients down to its clients. Now let's add that configuration to VSR103. We go into the address family, pick the peer I'm doing VSR 101 first and it's this reflect client command done do the same for 102 because I'm in the lab to speed things up I'll just reset the sessions They're back up, it's all established. So let's go back and look at VSR 102's BGP table so we can see what it was like before. We just had these two, we're expecting more now. And there we go. And we do have these new prefixes, the 172.30.1 slash 24 and 172.30.4 slash 24. Those are the IBGP learnt routes that are being reflected from the root reflector down to the client. Nothing particularly interesting going on just looking at the table like this, but let's take a look at the 
specific prefixes. If we look closely, we can see that we've got two new BGP attributes in the update. We've got this originator and we've got the cluster list. To explain that further, the originator ID and coming from the RFC 4456, because we love to quote an RFC, the originator ID is created by a root reflector in reflecting a root. So it's added by the root reflector when it does the reflection. This attribute will carry the BGP identifier of the originator of the root in the local AS. A router that recognizes the originator ID attribute should ignore a route received with its BGP identifier as the originator ID. So essentially it's a loop prevention mechanism because we have loosened the rules on forwarding IBGP prefixes Thus, there is the possibility for misconfiguration of root reflectors, which would create a loop. We obviously don't want that, so we have introduced new BGP attributes to stop that. And something that's quite interesting about this is that the attribute is the BGP identifier of the originator of the root. So it's not like it's the next hop or anything. It's the BGP ID of the router that originally injected the route into the network. Let's take a closer look. Now if we concentrate on another prefix, this 172.34.0, this is injected by VSL 104 that I've got top right. Here it is. The BGP router ID is 4.4.4.4. That's advertised across to VSL 103. If we look at that prefix in VSR 103's BGP routing table, you can see there's the next hop, but there attached to it is the BGP router ID. And then if we follow that down to where it's reflected down to VSR 102, you can see that the originator ID is the original BGP local router ID from VSR 104 because that's the device that injected the prefix into the network. So if VSR 104 receives this prefix back with its own originator ID in it, then it should drop it, thus preventing loops. Here we can see an illustration of the originator ID if a prefix got sent out and root reflectors were misconfigured in the network and they were reflecting the root rounding and loop then it would drop when it was received with the local root reflectors originator ID within the BGP update. Now let's look at the other BGP attribute which is new to root reflectors and that is the cluster list. So another RFC quote and it reads, when a root reflector reflects a root, it must prepend the local cluster ID to the cluster list. Using this attribute, a root reflector can identify if the routing information has looped back to the same cluster due to a misconfiguration. If the local cluster ID is found in the cluster list, the advertisement received should be ignored. So it sounds very much like ASPath being added to an eBGP prefix. We add in a cluster ID that becomes part of the BGP update. If it loops back round into a cluster, then it should be dropped and thus preventing loops. Here's an illustration of that. We've got two different clusters. We've got root reflectors configured. Cluster 1 originates a prefix which goes out to cluster 2 but then gets looped back, gets reflected back into cluster 1 where it will be dropped because cluster 1's cluster ID is part of the BGP update. The root reflector will see that and drop it. Looking back at VSR 102 we can see the cluster list of 3.3.3.3. .3. Now that's the local router ID for VSR 103 so that becomes by default the cluster list ID but you may be thinking what if we've got two root reflectors in our cluster what will be the cluster ID because if by default we take the BGP router ID of the reflector if we've got two reflectors obviously we're going to have two competing IDs so what we actually have here is we have a 
command which can configure a cluster ID on a device. So both of these root reflectors, if we add in this reflector cluster ID number, it doesn't need to be an IP address, it can just be any number to ID the cluster that will be used instead. So this is the recommended configuration if you've got more than one root reflector. And if we take a quick look at the configuration on VSL 103, we can see here the reflector cluster ID and we can add in we can use the format uh, of an IPv4 address or we can just put in a number like so. Okay, that was a quick overview of BGP root reflectors in the wider context of BGP loop prevention. I hope you found that useful. If you did, please like, comment and subscribe to the channel. Plenty more BGP and IP routing videos coming up, but that's all for now. Thanks for watching. My name's Joe Neville and goodbye.